it's 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 a very easy section. Five questions you sh- should take not more than two minutes. One twenty seconds, not even one twenty. Ninety seconds for five questions. Okay, which means eighteen seconds per question. Okay, two things to keep in mind. One is look at the data alone first. Look at the statements alone first, and try to get the answer. If you get the answer by alone, that's precisely the answer. If you do not get, then combine and check. There are two types of data sufficiency question. One is the WH question. One is the IS question. Now, when you have a what, which, whatever, who, blah blah blah, here you have to get the answer. When you have an IS question, here is just to confirm whether it is going to be yes or no. Okay, the consistency of this will get you the answer. So, if everything is yes, data is sufficient to answer. But if one of them is yes and one of them is no, it is still dicey. So if I say, is x more than five? I'm just giving you a quant example. Is x more than five? And if I have x cube is two one six, statement one, and x square is thirty six, statement two. In the previous case, I get x is six, which means yes, it is true. Only I got a yes, sufficient to answer. Here the answer can be plus six minus six. So I'll say yes for plus six, no for minus six, which means this cannot answer my question. If I have x cube is sixty four as third statement, so x is plus four. Is it more than five? No, but it still answers. It gives a unique answer, which means sufficient. But if I say x square is sixteen, x is plus or minus four. Is it more than five? Plus four is also not more than five. Minus four is also not more than five. In both of them, I get a no. That is why it is still sufficient to get the answer. You understand this? So, in this question, the idea is about answering whether it is yes or no. If you have a yes and no together, it is not sufficient. But if you have only yeses and only noes, it is sufficient. Clear? What is just about answers? So, precisely logical reasoning data sufficiency. You'll have what kind of questions? For example, the first one: what, who, and all that. Who among Meera, Jyoti, Pinky, Sadhana is all? Look at the first statement. When you look at the first statement, look at that statement only. I mean, don't look at the other, second statement for now. Meera is not as tall as Pinky or Sadhana, so Meera is not as tall as Pinky. She can be equal to them. She can be lesser. So we cannot really make a judgment in the first statement because we don't know the fourth lady's status. Jyoti is taller than Sadhana in the second statement, so Jyoti is taller than Sadhana. We cannot answer using this also because we only know. Two people status. If we merge this up, I get Meera, Sadhana, Jyoti somewhere here, but I still don't know where is P is here or P is here. So Pinky, I have no idea about. So the answer is the statement cannot be answered in spite of using both of them. So the answer is four. Are we clear? So look at them individually. This is a area where you have high speed and a miserable accuracy. Okay, very low accuracy. Okay, so don't be in a hurry. Just follow these rules. Look at first statement alone. Look at second statement alone. Then try to merge it. And even then, if you don't get the answer, then mark cannot be determined. Let's move ahead. Next question: How is N related to M? O is the husband of N. So I know one thing: O is a male, N is a female. That's the only thing I can infer from this because I want N and M. I did not get M here. One is not alone. Sufficient. Z, who is a sister of brother of M, is a daughter of N. Let's look at that alone. Z, who is a sister of brother of M, so M's brother, sister, M's brother, sister is Z, which means M is Z is M's sister. So Z is a female. Who is a daughter of N? Daughter of N. So I know one thing. I know one thing. I know one thing. I know one thing. I know one thing here. N is a parent of M, but I cannot really say what relationship they have. It's a mother, father, what. 
daughter of n right that is second i'm looking at second one alone right now combine let's say combine o is the husband of n i know n is a female now so n is m's mother so the answer is the question can be answered by combining both five that's why you have the accuracy drip here next question got the point B is a sister of A. How is it related to B? Now B is a sister. A can be a brother. A can be a sister. We just need to know A's gender. Let's see where do we where do we find A's gender? A is the only son. Perfect. One can answer. A has two sisters. Cannot answer. So the answer is one. You will have a lot of blood relationship data sufficiency. Here. Got the point? Since B is a sister already. We have to just find A's gender, and A's gender we get by only son. Five blood relation. Yeah, I'm sure. How is X related to W? X to W. V is a husband of X. Now these things will determine genders only. Okay, V is a husband of X, so X becomes a female. V is a male. Cannot do much because there's no W here. W is a brother of Z, and Z's mother is X. So W is a brother of Z. Brother is brother of Z, male, and Z's mother is X, female. You got the relationship of X and W. So the answer is two alone. You don't need this first statement at all. Yeah, thank you. Is this college co-ed? Is this college co-ed? There are more female teachers than male teachers. Doesn't matter. A girl known to me was the topper of this college. Doesn't matter. So the answer is four. ये क्या कहाँ से आया पता नहीं मुझे. So it can be a girls' college too, right? Don't be so uh, you know like <laughs> chauvinist. That's all. Don't be a chauvinist. You can have girls' schools. See, that's where the problem is. <laughs> You yourself want to give the privilege, okay? How is A related to B? A is sister-in-law of C, who's a daughter-in-law of B, who's a wife of D. Start from behind. B is a wife of D, so B is a wife of D. D is a male. B is a female. C is a daughter-in-law of B. Daughter-in-law of B means. This guy's son's wife is C. A is sister-in-law of C. Yeah, sister-in-law of C means this guy's sister. So he's the daughter of B. So the answer is one is sufficient to answer the question. Let's see two. Let's see two also. You should not ignore two. Okay, if one gets the answer, doesn't mean you ignore two. B is the mother of A's son's son's only uncle's son. <laughs> A's son, sorry. A's son, A's son is A's son. Only uncle will be A's brother. Brother's son will be cousin. And B is the mother of this guy. I'll repeat this. A's son is this guy. His uncle is going to be this guy's brother, and his son is going to be this guy's cousin. And who is B? Is the mother of this guy? Hmm? So, relationship between A and B cannot be found out here because of A's gender. Yeah, A's gender is the issue. Okay, because you don't know A's gender. So the answer is. One is sufficient, two is not. Keep in mind, a relationship in the former case was of a mother and a son. It is not necessary that in the latter case it will be the true. It will be true. Ah, it can be brother also. Anything is possible. So treat them separately. That's why that's why I started with. Okay. So one and two should be considered separate. You may have A is a mother of B in the first case. A is a daughter of B in the other case. Okay. But here you did not know A is gender, by the way. That was the only issue.
that's okay both are sufficient both are stand alone sufficient independently sufficient amongst a b c d e f each having a different height who is the shortest so you have different height a b c d e f let's see who is the shortest c is taller than d c is short c is shorter than only b so c is precisely after b and nobody is above c they can be equal keep in mind a is taller than d and f only d and f so a can be only about d and f so they are not connected at all so the answer is 4 cannot make it out they don't have any common point are you clear all right 44th point x is in which direction with respect to point y so there are two points mentioned point z is equidistant from both x and y now in this case x and y can be in this way line segment also and z in between fair possible it can be the other way around also right angle also it can be an equilateral triangle also anything 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 walking 5 km so one cannot answer the question walking 5 km east of point x so let's say x we have moving 5 km east and taking two consecutive right turns so first right turn will be where down, down. and then left this to y so you move five right five left and you reach y where is y with respect to x you find out it is down okay it is south so the answer is two can answer and one cannot are we clear next question how is much written in a code language you must see is blah 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 did you see is so and so and that code language so you see you see can be removed and you'll get must so only one wait a minute don't say only one let's say we have two as well oh there's no must what on which day of the week does arti's birthday fall sonu remembers correctly arti's birthday falls after wednesday but before sunday so it can be thursday friday Saturday. Raj remembers correctly. Arti's birthday falls before Friday, but after Tuesday. So it can be Wednesday, Thursday. What is the answer? Thursday. Both are required. Answer five. How many marbles does Sanjay have? Sanjay has three times more, three times more marbles than Ahmed. Ahmed, first statement cannot answer. Ahmed has one third number of marbles as San Suresh, who has as many marbles as Sanjay. Same thing again. So the answer is four. Cannot answer. Rest, you can try by yourself. It's very simple. Let's move to the next topic. Circular arrangement. 